28 years of being with someone, you just feel like your voice has been stolen. He shot one of his partners, then he shot his other senior partner, and then he turned the gun on himself. Today, we are with Kimberly Laska, who has a powerful, powerful story. She is an advocate for women, and we're so thankful that you're here today. Thank you for having me. So tell me a little bit about your life. Well, I think I started out um, as a child that limped a little bit. And I, I say limped because emotionally, I went through a divorce with my parents, and um, that inflicted a lot of wounds, insecurities um, about myself. Um, and I think that I carried that in to my adulthood. And I think that um, a lot of that has to do with this sense of unworthiness. But as I met my husband, um, that really came to the forefront. For 10 years, um, we were a part of the community, for sure. And John was well known in the community. We had um, very popular bands, Christian bands that would come and do concerts at our church. We had the in and out truck come and it was an outreach to the community. Uh, John was well known. He had a radio show locally and then um, nationally. Um, he, his messages were, were sent out all over and we were counseling couples in our home at least two times a week on their marriage and issues, uh, drug addiction. We, we handled quite a few things. And then things turned for the worse. He had lost his passion uh, to serve, to teach the word. Um, he just got very quiet and very introverted. He was never really this outgoing guy, mm -hmm. um, but he became more and more secluded. Okay. And he came to me one day and said, you know, I, I think it's time. I think I need to step down. After six months of him stepping down, unbeknownst to me, he began having affairs. So he was having affairs? He was doing drugs? I didn't know that until a few months into his affairs when he came to me um, and he told me that he had been doing large quantities of cocaine. So you got divorced. After a year, uh, we went to counseling and again, mm -hmm. trying to fix this broken marriage. Mm -hmm. um, I had enough. And after two bottles of wine, because that's what I chose to do, was start to medicate this pain uh -huh. that I just couldn't take anymore. I, I didn't know what to do with myself anymore. And it was about three in the morning that I woke up with a fragrance in my room and I couldn't identify that fragrance. And after two bottles of wine, you start to wonder what in the world is going on, smelling things in your room, but I was awakened by a voice in my heart, and it was, daughter, I am with you, and I'm for you. And I thought to myself, am I hearing things? What, what? And I heard it again, daughter, I'm with you, and I am for you. And after the third time, I sat up in bed as I was weeping, because I knew I knew that voice. That was the voice of my Lord. So you felt that peace? I felt that comfort. And I remember raising my hand up to the sky. And I just said, I vote for me. Today I vote for me. Let's talk about December 2017. It had been about four years after we'd been divorced. And I had received a phone call. Um, and I knew that John was going to be uh, fired because he had called me the night before and told me that he was going in and he was going to be fired. And I said, you know, you're going to be okay, John. 
we're going to do this and we're going to do that and you know you'll be okay and he was extremely somber and he said you know Kimberly I have always loved you and I always will and I'm so sorry for the pain all of the pain that I caused you mm -hmm. and we had this exchange almost as friends at that moment and he said I'm going in tomorrow two o'clock can you just pray for me I said 100 yes I will pray for you please call me and let me know you know oh, how yes. it all went mm -hmm. yeah so I didn't receive a call um it was two o'clock it was 2 30 it was three o'clock and I received a phone call from my daughter-in-law and she said, I think something's happened and you need to turn on the news. And sure enough, we as a family, some of my kids were there and the rest of them were on their way. Um, and that there indeed had been a shooting um, in the office where John, you know, where his workplace was. And he went in with his gun. He shot one of his partners, critically injured him. Then he shot his other senior partner and killed him. And then he turned the gun on himself and wow. shot and killed himself. But what was going through your mind when you saw that? This was devastating. And I thought to myself, how am I gonna explain this to my kids? How do you tell them? Everything came in crystal clear focus for me. It had been so difficult for me, the years of him really bashing me, putting me down, making me feel less than, making me feel stupid, not giving me the opportunity to honor me and honor you know my opinion and and things he was extremely controlling over me and in that time over 28 years of being with someone you just feel like your voice has been stolen and i just didn't know who i was anymore i know my purpose in life and my purpose in life is to encourage and uplift other women and I knew that walking through this fire wasn't just a once in a lifetime situation, but it was so that I could go out and help to lift other women to higher ground. And so I felt this passion build up inside of me and I became a life coach. And I felt that, you know, all those years of counseling where I've had so many women in all these circumstances, the very same things that I was sympathetic towards other women, I now became empathetic mm. because I had walked it out and I knew and I saw myself as being someone that could create somewhat of a chain link fence, you know, just locking arms with other women. And so this started to build inside of me and I felt this passion and this drive. I need to speak and I need to speak because there are some women that aren't able to speak yet or don't have enough strength yet to speak or don't know how to speak that have been shamed and blamed and put down and told what they're not. And I felt that this is my time and the story that I have is to be used to build up other women because their story matters. And the biggest thing, if I could say anything to one woman, it is this, there is purpose in the pain. It's not just to, you know, take in air, breathe in, breathe out and just survive. I want to help women thrive and not just survive.
these women's stories are so impactful. Eris Sisters creates opportunities for women. Mm -hmm.